a precedent for how 5G networks got standardized, architected, and are getting built, right? A 5G core is not a monolithic core like a 4G core was, right? An LTE core pushed on top of uh, on a virtualization environment was really a force fit, right? It wasn't designed for that. It was a, a lift and shift towards a virtualized environment. We used hypervisor as a crutch to mask the fact that it was running on x86. What we see now is that the way 5G is standardized, the way it's architected, the way it's deployed in a microservices-based environment, simultaneously able to support itself in a container on VM, a container on bare metal, or natively running some of the functions on bare metal, uh, I think it's been good for the industry. So. so I'm here with Kevin Schatzkamer, Head of Service Provider at Dell Technologies. Uh, Kevin, loads happening in, in telco networking, networking technology. Um, as usual, really exciting time. I guess the biggest thing right now is, is Edge, um, particularly with the big announcements we've heard recently from telcos partnering with hyperscalers, telcos growing their own. What are you seeing there? Yeah, I think uh, you know the, the, the Edge is a developing business model, not necessarily a technology model, but a business model continues to uh, to accelerate, and I think that's good for the industry. I think that We've had a, an over-rotation to the belief that everything can move to big centralized data centers and public cloud, and even public cloud providers are realizing that there's a set of experiences that we're looking to enable from an industry perspective that demand lower latency, that are more data-driven, more interactive, uh, and more sensitive to, uh, to distance between application and end consumer of that application, that we're seeing this decentralization happen uh, uh, in a way that uh, I think is is paced to uh, to suit use cases and to be able to enable the industry to move uh, both quickly through these partnerships with public cloud providers, but also strategically with a little more foresight into what use cases will be telco specific and opportunities for telcos to differentiate themselves mm -hmm. with their own offerings. And what's the, what would you say is the kind of key reason to partner with with a with a hyperscaler if you're if you're in the telco? Yeah, I think you know the the edge is materializing for the telco in, in a couple of key ways. Certainly, SD WAN and IoT and the on prem edge continues to be an area that that they're successful in building offerings around. Uh, I think for their own edge in terms of the transformation of their own facilities, um, all public cloud providers that are successful today started with a lead application and lead use case that helped them to establish and build the scale that they needed to then turn it loose on the industry from a consumption basis, right? So for Amazon Web Services, that use case was was really the retail platform, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Once Christmas passed, the the, uh, the scale of the platform, the need for the scale of the platform decreased, so we started to sell off excess capacity. If we look at Microsoft, the build out of Office 365 and, and Outlook services from a cloud perspective generated the initial platform. For Google, it was really the build out of their uh, of their consumer apps business, Gmail and, and Google Search and whatnot, uh, and then with that scale, they were, they were then in position to sell capacity. Uh, as we start to look at this edge, we, we in the telco space, the provider edge has been stuck in a, a cycle around what use case makes sense, what use case could be profitable. Uh, I don't want to build it and, and hope that they come. I want that first use case to really start to move the industry forward. And in the absence of, uh, of continuing to uh, churn around what that use case is, I think that the partnerships with the public cloud providers will provide a catalyst for edge computing. It will provide a learning ground. It will provide new experiences for end users. And it will really define what edge is. Uh, and it will give the, the telecommunications industry the opportunity to then step back and determine where they go from there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I guess as well, it's a, a kind of immediate access for developers and, and, and all of that community where they can't work with a thousand telcos. And... Uh, of course. I mean, uh, look, uh, application ecosystems have been built around uh, the APIs and the, uh, the DevOps environments that have been established in the public cloud providers. And for application developers, it's easy to consume those APIs because they do it on a regular basis. So uh, uh, I think in, we, we're not good as a telecommunications industry at building these application ecosystems. Mm -hmm. So 
here's a homegrown ecosystem that's built for us that we can then take out into the industry, develop use cases on top of, and then step back and say, what are the strategic opportunities where I don't need a big ecosystem, but I need a strategic partner that can accomplish a specific directive that I'm good as a telecommunications carrier at enabling that my customers want and that I have the ability to sell. Uh, there's a couple of use cases that, that bubble up to the top for, for provider edge, and that is, I have my own operations environment that I need to handle. I'm virtualizing my radio, I'm distributing my, my packet core, user plane, et cetera. That's gonna be the predominant platform to go and, and justify a deployment of edge resources. And the question is, how do I scale and deploy something that's sustainable from a business model perspective to bring, bring third-party apps on top of? Okay, so uh, one of the things we hear uh, quite a bit about is this idea of kind of heterogeneous compute or heterogeneous platforms at the edge particularly. What are you seeing there? Yeah, I think, you know, I, I, I've given presentations in the past uh, entitled Embrace Heterogeneity because uh, I think we've swung wildly as an industry towards only thinking about x86. And while Intel Xeon scalable processing is, is absolutely key for enabling this, in, this ecosystem and technologies like DPDK are important, I think that there's growing recognition that there's a set of accelerators that exist inside of platforms, whether they be FPGAs, whether they be GPUs, whether they be smart NICs, whether they be accelerators into the storage, uh, into access to storage, et cetera, that are all really important for, for being able to optimize applications and services that run on top of server infrastructure at the edge. Uh, I think that what, what public cloud has done well is built a homogeneous model that's, that's uh, repeatable. But what we see at the edge is that this repeatable homogeneity model just doesn't suit for what is a very wide range of use cases in which we don't have immediate access to infrastructure, we can't visit these sites frequently, uh, and, and the length of use of services can, be, can vary pretty wildly. So when we talk about this heterogene heterogeneous architecture, uh, it's both a technology conversation, it's a business conversation in terms of what do I deploy there, uh, and it's an operations conversation because operating heterogeneous infrastructure is not easy. So it's, it's interestingly a, uh, an entire problem space that's not been solved in public cloud. Mm -hmm. And do you have an idea what a heterogeneous infrastructure kind of looks like in a, in a physical sense, how it's configured? Is there a, yeah. a model there? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's GPU-enabled servers. It's, it's, uh, it is FPGA-enabled servers. It's SmartNIC-enabled services. It's storage class memory. It's solid-state drives. It's spinning drives. Uh, it's... Um, uh, uh, it's single socket, it's dual socket, so it's, it, it, it's, uh, it's just about everything we have in the portfolio, which is why I said that the, the breadth and depth of our portfolio that we have is such an important asset for us. Certainly there's opportunities for us to build force, uh, uh, form and specific platforms for telecommunications, but this is, uh, this is a scale play more than anything else. And having a, a wide range of portfolio that, that is able to match application use case is really important. That homogeneous architectures at the edge are, are for large degree dead because the complexity of the use cases that will, will demand the infrastructure are going to change and swing so wildly and vastly. Uh, and we've had conversations with, with one carrier actually here in Europe who, who dropped 90 use cases on top of us and said, give us one platform to go deploy it. And oh, by the way, these use cases are going to ramp up over the next you know, two to three years. So mm -hmm. we want to deploy the infrastructure once get it right the first time and do a pay per consumption type model. And the use cases were everything from extremely low latency things connecting once a day to you know, massive transcoding at the edge. And, and the infrastructure to support that is just, it's just not possible. So I, uh, I like your point about the ecosystem and uh, the sort of service offer. Tell us a bit about how that translates down into, I guess, real world in terms of, for example, locations and facilities and the hardware offer that you will put together. Yeah, so you know, when we formed and built our telecommunications vertical, I think there was a clear recognition of a couple of things. One, uh, our standard set of infrastructure that we have is generally well suited for 80 to 90 percent of use cases. Uh, number two is that there's about 10 to 15 percent where commodity standardized x86 architectures from Intel uh, need to be force, uh, um, um, optimized for the particular environment, whether it's 
uh, the environmentals that need to change, whether it's the form factors that need to change, NEBS compliance, DC powered, front facing ports, et cetera, to really meet the facilities requirements that the telecommunications industry has. And then that's another place where we work very closely with Intel to, to be able to define and develop those new systems. Uh, and then thirdly is that there's a specific set of capabilities and ecosystem that we need to build around both one and two, our standard platforms and our telco specific platforms. Uh, and, uh, and building out those ecosystems, both in partnerships with the service providers themselves, as well as with network equipment providers, as well as uh, with startup communities, et cetera, is really important for being able to demonstrate uh, and build proficiency that shows we're not just here as a hardware vendor, we're here as a partner to help you go enable your own operations, as well as to, to help you develop new use cases that consume that infrastructure. Great, Kevin, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.